the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So, Chris will be with us in a moment or two, but we're going to explore the road to strange travel tales of the paranormal and beyond. And we're welcoming back Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Welcome back to the Paracast. Hi there, Gene. It's great to be back. And Michael Bryan will be joining us a little bit later. He's a co-author of the book. And we're going to find out what they did, how they did it, and how this whole thing got started. It's also, as you can see when you look at the book, it's a collection of different articles from different people on these subjects. And we'll find out how those selections were made and how this thing got started. But right now, Rosemary, you probably haven't kept up to date on every little nuance of it. But we've had these stories here that, I guess, under the behest of former U.S. Senator Harry Reid, who was then Senate Majority Leader, to have a Pentagon-based investigation into UFOs. And that's gotten a bit of publicity. I mean, not an extensive amount. It's always like these extra stories that the talking heads on cable TV put on when they aren't covering budget battles, Trump, and all the other stuff that's happening. How did you first hear about it? I read the articles uh, as they broke in the media. I had a reaction that's probably similar to many people who have followed the field over the years. It's well, what's what's new about uh, the reality of UFOs and what took you so long? People have been having extraordinary experiences, including commercial airline pilots, military pilots, astronauts, people in everyday walks of life. They've been having experiences for decades and decades. We've had all kinds of studies, one on top of another, that either leave the mystery open or they debunk it all together. This Goodbye. just seems to be the latest wrinkle. Uh, it's certainly a promising wrinkle, but it's it's like um, they've decided to ask some questions about things that people already know are going on. The thing that I wonder about here is if the U.S. military or any branch of the government has top secret knowledge about UFOs, they've captured UFOs, say, at Roswell or somewhere. They've got the craft on ice. They've got alien beings on ice. They have all this smoking gun evidence. Why would you need to have a study? Well, exactly, Gene. And sometimes I think studies are just distractions. Uh, Let's get all excited about a study and uh, the collection of data, and then some uh, vague results will, will come out of that. It gets people excited all over again, and heaven knows the field of ufology has been rather slow, even moribund for quite some time. We've had no big news. This has been like a breath of fresh air to get people excited again. You do have to ask if it's just more of the same same old business. Uh, Is it going to help something like disclosure? Well, I've been of the opinion for a good number of years now that uh, disclosure is not going to happen from the top down. It's a bottom-up process that's already well underway. And here again, we don't need officials in the government to tell we, the people of this planet, uh, what's been happening in terms of interaction with non-human life forms. Well, the thing also to bear in mind here is that, yes, it could be a publicity thing, but this is not something that happened now. Apparently, it was finished by 2012 of supposedly... Senator Reid is pals with Robert Bigelow, the hotel magnate who is also involved with Bigelow Aerospace and has an abiding interest in UFOs and has funded research. So evidently he's involved here. But again, if they have solid evidence, why go there? Also, was there a compelling interest for this to happen now? Because it's not, as you say, as if UFOs are front and center And even after it happened, after it got all this publicity, the New York Times ran the story, the wire services, Politico, everything. As I said, it's still not a top 10 story. Well, exactly. I was wondering what the connection might be, if any, between that and Tom DeLonge's to the Stars Academy announcement uh, a few months ago, which many people viewed as a kind in kind of a ho hum way, 
Uh, they didn't get all that excited about it. But the rumblings are that we're going to have increasing uh, disclosure-oriented uh, news coming out uh, regarding the alien presence on Earth. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of it to be couched in negative terms, not positive. And uh, we'll be seeing um, more programming, films, and things like that. So it could be part of an overall mass consciousness conditioning uh, program to condition people, keep conditioning them to the alien presence on Earth. So this is what we would call gradual disclosure, just the same way we learn about more and more possible life-bearing planets in our galaxy because they are within the so-called Goldilocks zone or whatever. These exoplanets, well, if they can harbor possible life, then maybe it's life as we know it. Maybe there's intelligent life. Maybe they're coming here. But that may also be part of the natural development of science. And it's really hard to tell. And the thing I wonder about here is we all talk about Tom DeLonge in the world of the paranormal. And I guess anybody who's a fan of Blink-182 might be interested. But to most people, oh, he's just another eccentric rock millionaire who decided to indulge himself into chasing after flying saucers. So the question I have here is, how does this, what we see now, expand itself into general knowledge, or is it just a constant feeding of information so one day... The truth is out there, but there was no real big reaction because it was accepted so gradually. Uh, I, I don't think we know exactly where uh, this particular latest round is going yet. And uh, I think you're probably right that this gradual feed uh, and conditioning of consciousness uh, is something that's going to be so subtle uh, and happen over such a long period of time that suddenly we'll, we will have arrived at some sort of uh, status concerning the alien presence on Earth, and there is an alien presence on Earth. Uh, we'll, we will have arrived at some knowledge of it without realizing how we got there. You know, there's a very active debate in the Paracast forums as to whether UFOs are really extraterrestrial or something else. I don't know if you have, even have the time to check those things out. But it's an active debate, a lot of pro and con. There's a theory by some people, including our old friend Greg Bishop, whom you know, I believe, where he's talking about a co-creation theory, that there is something happening, but we are part of the process of creating what we perceive. I agree with that viewpoint, and I've had that viewpoint for a long time. Uh, I s started my full-time career investigating these topics, paranormal, UFOs, cryptids, uh, the metaphysical side of things, too, back in the early 80s. And uh, from early on, I was convinced that what we're calling extraterrestrial is probably not off-world. It's probably interdimensional. It's probably from something attached to the Earth but vibrating at a different uh, rate that would qualify it as uh, a parallel dimension, so to speak. I think uh, that's where most of the activity comes from. I'm not ruling out uh, um, extraterrestrial visitations. That's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. But uh, I think we need to come up with another term besides extraterrestrial because they're probably not. They're probably from right here. They're probably interdimensional. And then uh, on the other question of it about co-creation, um, I have over uh, the past uh, years gone deeper and deeper and into an exploration of uh, the role of human consciousness in all of our extraordinary experiences, whether it's a ghost in a haunting or an encounter with an alien in a ship. And we are, of course, inextricably bound up in the experience ourselves. We can never be uh, completely separate observers. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and we'll be talking in a few moments about the new book, The Road to Strange, right now, because of all the publicity. It's UFOs in that secret Pentagon program. More to come. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. 
We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Hey, folks, Tom D. for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, ghosts, zombies, UFOs, crop circles, and more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people who seek a little more than the other dating services offer. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com. And if you decide you like it and you want to connect with others, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. So many people want to share their experiences with the paranormal, the afterlife, the unusual. And this is the place to meet and share common interests with those of like minds. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com. That's ParanormalDate.com. Use the code word GEORGE and start meeting others. Get going now and connect with someone you like. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. People search the internet for everything, including you. With a few clicks, information from your past can be quickly discovered. From business deals gone wrong, to misleading reviews, negative articles, and unflattering images. Studies show 78% of people search for someone online before doing business with them. Will they find the real you? With ReputationDefender.com, you can establish a positive internet presence. ReputationDefender.com pioneered the field with over a decade of experience, serving thousands of successful individuals and businesses. We use patented, award-winning systems to boost positive content and suppress negative material. Don't let the internet define you. Take control of your reputation today with ReputationDefender.com. For your quick, free reputation analysis, call 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771, 800-831-0771, or visit reputationdefender.com. Fully cooked, ready-to-eat bacon. I'm talking thick, meaty, center-cut, presidential bacon. Savory and delicious. I buy some, I use some, I store some. Awesome. No refrigeration needed with a 10-year shelf life. NASA Pack technology. Bacon. Fully cooked, fully hydrated, ready-to-eat right from the pack bacon. Or warm and served. Life-saving, ready-to-eat bacon. 10-year shelf life bacon. Ships free at FullyCookedBacon.com. FullyCookedBacon.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley. The book is The Road to Strange. And right now we're looking at the road to UFOs and the possibilities here. Do you think, Rosemary, that maybe with the UFO phenomenon and what we see, that all these mysteries are really, really interrelated and we're seeing different angles of the same thing? It's quite likely, Gene. All of these phenomena across all of these fields are interrelated in some way. It's six degrees of separation or less, that's for sure. And I think that our human consciousness, both the individual and mass consciousness, play a significant 
role in terms of what we experience and how we experience it. In many respects, you could make the argument that we co-create the phenomena we experience. Uh, And Carl Jung made that case several decades ago in the early 1950s in um, his essay on flying saucers. He called them a modern myth, that they could be projections of the human consciousness that was expressing anxiety or fear of the unknown. A lot of our extraordinary experiences bring us face to face with the unknown. And for human beings, uh, there's often a fear factor there. As we evolve through history and we have changes in our technology and cultural and religious spiritual beliefs, what we project outward is likely to change. Ergo, yesterday's fairies become today's extraterrestrials. And I I think there's a lot to that argument. We cannot separate ourselves from all of these phenomena. And so that raises some questions about, well, are are there ever then discrete, entirely separate beings from elsewhere in their own right who come and visit people? Uh, that seems to be the case, uh, that there are visiting beings from other realities. And I have to call them other realities rather than planets or, or worlds because we don't know where they're from. We also don't know enough about human consciousness to be able to ascertain just how much we are shaping the reality we are experiencing. You see, sometimes I wonder here if we have kind of a floating reality that as we understand more of what's going on, the reality expands itself to address that. As far as UFOs are concerned, I'm thinking here 100 years from now, we may have strange things going on. But we may look at them with an entirely different perspective. Any suggestions about both of these things? I I suspect that we will, that our perspective a century from now is going to be much different. And in fact, we could be uh, looking back on ourselves today thinking that uh, we were rather primitive and misinformed the same way we look back several hundred years and look at the fairy beliefs uh, that people held and uh, were very convinced about those realities. Human consciousness is expanding and changing reality. Our our experiences themselves expand our consciousness and shift reality. And I've called this process for some years the emergence of trans-reality Earth, the Earth of the future. And it could even be within a few decades, not several hundreds of years, but maybe even a few decades, because we are changing at such a fast rate. The reality uh, is going to be much different where uh, we will have more experiences and encounters with uh, spirits, with non-human kinds of beings. We will perceive reality in a much different way. We will be outside of linear time. There will be a blurring of what we now perceive as boundaries between realities. Our reality is very fixed thanks to consensus. And yet we have these breakthroughs of extraordinary experiences that show us that there's something else out there. And how do we fit it into this fixed reality? Well, that fixed reality, I believe, is going to become a lot more fluid. To me, that's rather exciting. It also requires people to be prepared for those changes. Because you can't go into uh, an expansion of of reality from fear-based mindsets. So when the media is constantly portraying these things in a fearful sort of way, that reinforces uh, how we think about these uh, sorts of phenomena. And that, in turn, can impact the kinds of experiences we have and our ability to assimilate them. Why do they want to make us fear so much? Well, from a conspiracy point of view, when you have people in fear, they're much easier to control. And if there are elitist forces on the planet, conspiracy is not something I've delved into real deeply, but it makes sense to me that there would be various factions and elements of corporations and politicians, governments, consortiums, bloodlines, who knows what, that would want to keep the upper hand on everything. You control the masses by instilling fear in them, because when they're fearful, then you present solutions to them, or you limit them in some way. We have some of that uh, fear-based limitation going on since 9-11 in this country, where we've seen a steady erosion of basically civil rights, freedoms of movement in the name of security. 
And every time there is uh, some mass attack somewhere, and sometimes I think these attacks are purposely planned for the purpose of generating fear, then the questions arise, well, uh, what are you going to give up so that you can be safer? And we should not have to give up anything. We should not have to be documented up one side and down the other. We should not have probes under our skin monitoring our movements. We shouldn't have anything like that. There's nothing we should have to give up. But that's what's happening right under our noses. Separating the conspiracy theories involved here and possible attempts to assume greater control over our affairs by making us afraid. You have a lot to fear all this fear-mongering. Do you think there are physical spaceships with physical beings from some other world coming here? Or is that all so mixed up with all this other stuff we wouldn't even know? My uh, opinion of at least the craft that we have experienced to date, they're really more paraphysical than physical uh, because uh, they exhibit characteristics that go beyond known reality. And I don't think it's just super technology. I think that they have uh, characteristics that are not limited to uh, to what we know in, in physical reality in terms of shape-shifting, being able to um, travel the timeline, morph from one thing into another. And uh, the beings that occupy these vessels um, may be similar in nature, very, very fluid, able to assume forms that seem physical but yet uh, can become non-physical and we have the same sort of thing going on in the paranormal, uh, where entities can s seem very physical and exert physical force in an environment, and yet in an instant they can disappear or turn into vapor or something like that that nobody can explain uh, naturally. I, I rather think that the, the craft are paraphysical. Um, I don't rule out physical craft like our airplanes, for example, and our spacecraft. But it seems to me that what we've had penetrating our reality from these other realities uh, is something that is neither of this world nor of another world, if, if you know what I mean. It's a, they kind of straddle interdimensional uh, realities. Got to do our break here, Rosemary Ellen Guiley. More to come. We'll begin to explore the road to strange. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Want revenge on the common housefly? Well, after 10,000 years, someone has finally come up with a better way. The Bug Assault, a miniaturized shotgun, which utilizes ordinary table salt as ammunition. Non-toxic and no batteries required. So much fun, you'll forget you have a wife and kids. $39.95 and free economy shipping. Use discount code GCN and get an extra 10% off your purchase at BugAssault.com. Makes the perfect stocking stuffer. Get your Bug Assault today. Most people think life insurance pays after you're dead. That's true. But did you know you can have tax-free access to your life insurance while you're still alive? You can use the life benefits of your life insurance to grow your money with certainty and guarantees. No stock market risk, no tax risk, and no penalties. Call Life Benefits if you'd like a free book about how this can be done. Call 702-660-7000. That's 702-660-7000. Hello, Mr. Anderson. The NSA has noticed how much time you spend on conservative news sites. We have no choice but to consider you a domestic terrorist. Tired of your internet activity being monitored by Big Brother? Get VirtualShield.com, the world's easiest to use virtual private network. Browse the web anonymously, leaving pesky advertisers and spies in the dust. Get started today at VirtualShield.com. Take advantage of our free 30-day trial. VirtualShield.com. You have the right to remain private. Excuse me, sir. Could you take a picture of my family and me with my cell phone? Sure. 
poor Mrs. Anderson. Smile for the camera. Too bad hackers never get proper permission to access your cell phone or computer camera. Anyone is or could be susceptible to illegal spying. That's why VirtualShield.com has developed Identisafe, a new security software that blocks camera and microphone access from unwanted spies. Get started today at VirtualShield.com. Take advantage of our free 30-day trial. VirtualShield.com. You have the right to remain private. It's been said, any society is only three missed meals away from chaos. Those times may be near. Think about it. Our country faces multiple terrorist threats and aggressions from Russia and North Korea. Social unrest and violent marches yet again may lead to looting of stores and city shutdowns. And our crumbling infrastructure leaves our power grid vulnerable to long-term outages from a single cyber attack. When the chaos from any one of these threats arises, the government knows it can't provide during a widespread national emergency. That's why you need your own plan for self-reliance. That's where My Patriot Supply comes in. Get a four-week survival food supply for only $99. That includes breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Order online at preparewithgcn.com. $99 bucks for four weeks of survival food that tastes like homemade cooking and lasts up to 25 years from My Patriot Supply. Get your kits today at preparewithgcn.com. Free shipping is included. Preparewithgcn.com. Message and data rates may apply. Warning. Texting while driving is illegal just about everywhere. So if you want to take advantage of a life-changing LASIK offer, pull over when you can, because a special opportunity is just one text away. The LASIK Vision Institute is offering absolutely free evaluations and dramatically low prices on high-quality LASIK. Text the keyword CLEAR55 to 350350 to get the benefit of FDA-approved LASIK technology that gives the majority of patients 20-20 vision for a fraction of what others charge. Text to schedule your free appointment to see if LASIK is right for you. When you text CLEAR55 to 350350, you'll also get an extra 20% discount off our already low-cost services. We've already performed over a million procedures. Today, it's your turn. Discover how you can get the quality LASIK experience you've always wanted for a fraction of what others charge. This great offer is just a text away. Text CLEAR55 to 350350. That's C-L-E-A-R 55 to 350350. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. We've got Rosemary Ellen Guiley joining us, and a little bit later, her co author for the book, The Road to Strange. Michael Bryan will join us. In the meantime, we're talking about, obviously, the Pentagon's secret UFO thing, about reality, about what UFOs might be, about physical things. Now, there was that comment years ago that we paraphrase, you know, any sufficiently advanced technology would be to us like magic. And it could be here, do you think, maybe if we are being visited by beings hundreds or thousands of years ahead of us, that the things they do, part of their advanced technology would be to us magical or paraphysical or something else. We would certainly perceive it that way because uh, it would not perform, uh, they would not perform and their craft uh, would not perform to any known laws that we have. And I, I don't think that we would look at it as magical per se, like people did hundreds of years ago. We would consider them to have a more advanced technology, but it's it's very much in the same vein as magical. It's something that that is beyond the natural explanation of the day, and we certainly have been subjected to that. Now, my co-author Michael Bryan and I. Um, we're getting ready to release another book on UFOs, another Road to Strange book on uh, UFOs, aliens, and high strangeness. And we have um, many cases in there of uh, people having experiences with what seem to be paraphysical craft, uh, encounters with aliens. Uh, many times these encounters make no sense according to, uh, to natural laws. 
there seems to be a big trickster factor there. And why is that? We explore that. Uh, we get into expansions of time. And we keep coming back, Jean, to what has become a mantra in ufology. I know what I saw. And no matter what the skeptics say, no matter what crazy explanations they come up with, whether it's swamp gas or reflected light off squid boats or whatever, um, people who are experiencers know the truth of what happened. Now, there has been an argument over that name. I know what I saw, which was a title of a movie a documentary. And the argument yes. is that, yes, they saw something strange, but they don't know what it is or what it was. So I know I saw something strange, but because I saw something strange doesn't mean I have any idea what I saw. Well, this is very true because all experience is subjective. It has to be interpreted by the experiencer against a backdrop of their culture, their time in history, their personal beliefs, um, their religious beliefs. Uh, for example, if something seems like an alien and they have no knowledge of ETs or believe in ETs, are they going to think that it's ETs or are they going to interpret it some other way? Well, we have examples even in the ET literature of people initially calling beings angels because that's how they interpreted them. But the, the bigger point beyond that, as we grapple with how do we define what we experience. And researchers, I think, find value in looking for patterns uh, to see what common ground people share. Um, but yes, one person's uh, fairy is another person's angel is another person's ET. But the, the big thing is they had an extraordinary experience that did not fit explained reality. And when the debunkers come in, they want to explain it all away in terms of natural reality. They want to tell you uh, it was your wild imagination, must have been the beer you had, um, you were daydreaming. Um, there is this one case, uh, well, it was the New Zealand UFO case from the 1970s, very famous film footage shot where a, a crew went up in an airplane to recreate uh, footage for a documentary about a dramatic sighting and they in turn have a sighting themselves and they capture very dramatic footage of it and what do the government people do they say well you were just looking at, at reflected light off squid boats below i mean it's that kind of crazy stuff that infuriates experiencers because uh, it, it's it's like the debunkers want to deny that you had any experience at all and that's the wrong approach. The approach we should be taking is, yes, you had an experience. Now let's try to figure out what did you experience? Well, that only makes logical sense instead of saying to a person, well, you're crazy or you saw swamp gas. But even Dr. J. Allen Hynek lived down the swamp gas. It is. What are you seeing? But the thing I guess that some of us argue is we shouldn't make final assumptions. We're still researching this thing. We don't understand everything about it yet. Obviously, a lot of things can be said in terms of extraterrestrials possibly being here. That seem logical. But at the end, we don't have a smoking gun. We don't have an IFO, an identified flying object. We have a UFO. We have lots of mysteries that are very compelling. And as you say, lots of people experience things and you can't tell them nothing happened. You could suggest what might have happened. And I know that... One thing we've talked about occasionally here in terms of UFOs are UFO abductions and the similarity between those and near-death experiences. But it comes down to the same thing. Weird things are happening, sometimes frightening things. What's happening to these people? Are they all wacky? Well, I don't think so. I've talked to enough people. You've talked to quite a bit more, I'm sure. Do you think, though, what's happening now with this story about the Pentagon UFO thing and everything. Is that just going to be another red herring and it'll disappear from the news in a few months? Or do you think it's going to be an ongoing thing? 
I think it's too early to tell. Um, I, ha- I have a rather dismal opinion of these kinds of stories just based on uh, the track record we've we've seen in, in uh, earlier times where uh, there's a, a flurry of interest over something and then it just all dies away. But um, uh, something really is going on, Gene, um, that's part of a big effort to to uh, condition mass consciousness. Um, and uh, this has been going on for a long time, but I think there's a push now uh, to maybe intensify it or increase it. And this could be part of that. So maybe its only purpose is to generate some interest and that on the heels of this will come something else that's going to seize that interest and that's going to be the real action. As you say, we don't know yet, but we can suspect what might happen. What might happen, folks, is if you subscribe to the Paracast Plus, you get a second radio show called After the Paracast, available exclusively to people who subscribe. And we can't even tell you what's going to happen from week to week because it's totally unexpected. Last week, for example, we had a fascinating 40 minutes or so spent with Greg Bishop. And he talked about the co-creation theory, also about this book he did with Adam Go Rightly, which is coming out soon, where he discusses the contactee movement and things you didn't know about contactees, such as one of the more well-known contactees, Dr. Frank Stranges, that was once arrested with someone else for trying to import a large quantity of marijuana in the early 70s. Talk about strange stuff. So again, you can get information about the Paracast Plus, which includes a version of this show free of the network ads. If you go to plus.theparacast.com, that's plus.theparacast.com. We have The Road to Strange on the agenda here. We're going to get really deep into this book. It's subtitled Travel Tales of the Paranormal and Beyond with Michael Bryan and Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Rosemary's with us now, and Michael will be joining us probably in the second half of the show. Chris O'Brien's on special assignment somewhere out there. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream, a dream that turns out to be a nightmare because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R O C K O I D S, dot com. Most people think life insurance pays after you're dead. That's true. But did you know you can have tax-free access to your life insurance while you're still alive? You can use the life benefits of your life insurance to grow your money with certainty and guarantees. No stock market risk, no tax risk, and no penalties. Call Life Benefits if you'd like a free book about how this can be done. Call 702-660-7000. That's 702-660-7000. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. 
If you or someone you care about loves outdoor adventure, then check out slingbow.com for some unique holiday gift ideas. That's slingbow.com, where we have some innovative new products for the archer, hunter, or bow fishing enthusiast in your family. Now through January, use the promo code HOLIDAY to get free shipping in the U.S. or Canada. And from all of us at Slingbow Industries, have a safe, joyous, and peaceful holiday season. Does the current world crisis in North Korea or our domestic crisis right here in America concern you? Well, I know it concerns me. My friends over at Legacy Food Storage have solutions in the event there's the inevitable. What's the inevitable? Civil unrest, a run on your local grocery store. And here's my question to you. If this happens, how do you feed your children? How do you feed your grandchildren? Legacy Food Storage has the solutions. In fact, they can help you implement a simple plan to take care of your needs in the event of the inevitable. By calling them right now, I have authorized them to give you a special 20% discount at checkout by simply using GCN. Call 888-543-7345 or visit them at LegacyFoodStorage.com. That's 888-543-7345 or visiting them at LegacyFoodStorage.com. Make sure you use GCN at checkout for an incredible 20% discount. Don't be a victim. Take control of your life now. Anytime, any place, anywhere, radio remains the most intimate of all forms of media. At home, at work, in the car, on smartphones. Over 90% of consumers still listen to radio every week. That makes choosing radio as a place to advertise your business one of the best decisions you can make. Email advertise at GCNlive.com and partner up with an experienced GCN representative. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We're happy to have back after, I don't know, was it a year or two, Rosemary? I, I think it's been a little longer than that, Gene. Uh, probably more like a couple of years. Well, it's nothing I did, but I'm glad to have you back. <laughs> I know you've been really busy. You've done a lot of work. And this new book, let's get into that right now. And we'll really get more into it as Michael Bryan joins us later. The Road to Strange. How did that get started? Uh, well, it, it started uh, over a, um, a lunch with me and Michael. And um, many people in ufology may remember Michael. He was quite active in the field uh, for some time. And uh, he was even known as the ambassador uh, of MUFON uh, for uh, quite a while. Michael has had a long time interest in all things strange, including UFOs. And in fact, that's where I got to know Michael years and years ago. Uh, I met him at the conferences. I would go to all the UFO conferences and uh, that's how we struck up an acquaintanceship. And he dropped in. He didn't really drop out of the field, but he stopped going to a lot of events, and so did I. And uh, circumstances came about that uh, I discovered that he was now relocated to Bainbridge Island, uh, out just across the Puget Sound from Seattle. And I go out to Seattle every summer to spend time with my family there. And uh, so we decided to get together and catch up. And that's when I learned about his treasure chest of unusual travel stories. Uh, Michael calls himself the travel psychologist, and he, he literally coined the term. Uh, there is a psychology of travel and how people are affected by their experiences. And uh, over the years, he had interviewed thousands of people about their travel experiences, some of them rather mundane, like, um, you know, how do you avoid pickpockets and, you know, things like that. How do you uh, survive this and that uh, in, in strange cities? But many of the stories were unusual in nature. And uh, so we thought that it would make an interesting collection about how people encounter the unknown when they least expect it. Now, uh, in looking at these stories, 
these are people from all walks of life going places all over the world. Uh, Michael is quite the international traveler. And they didn't set out to have UFO experiences or missing time or ghosts and hauntings or anything like that. They were just out on a trip. It was a business trip. It was a vacation. They were just having a good time. And suddenly, reality is shattered or intruded upon by the unknown. And for some people, it's a big shakeup. Um, many people, for example, don't believe in ghosts. And so if they go someplace and a ghost visits them in their bedroom in a dramatic way, well, that can really alter the vacation you thought you were taking. Uh, so what we did with The Road to Strange was to collect stories in different categories, uh, just as examples of how people encounter the unknown and how they're changed by it. How do they explain it to themselves? How are they changed by it, if they are at all? And every story has a commentary at the end where we look at the story and say, well, uh, how do we explain this? Are there natural explanations? Um of the paranormal phenomena, kinds of things that happen, what are they called, and what do researchers know about them? So we try to put every story in a context so that it becomes illuminating for the reader. And uh, it's, it's a fascinating collection. We have encounters with the dead. Uh, we have mystical visions, missing time. We have downloads, uh, a lot of ghosts and hauntings. That's probably the most common kind of experience. And uh, it, it makes for a real page turn. What's interesting here is one thing you say, that when these things happen, people aren't going into it expecting to see a ghost or a UFO. It comes right out of left field. In fact, I wonder sometimes if you look too hard to find something, you won't see it. Well, that's often the case. I mean, just look at all the Bigfoot hunts. I've been out on Bigfoot hunts, and it seems that the harder you look uh, for Bigfoot, the, the more elusive Bigfoot is. And uh, it's the same with paranormal investigation, which I've done for decades now. I mean, yes, you can have a real active night and a lot of things will happen, but sometimes you go looking for the phenomena that you know are there because they've been reported, and they're like cats that hide under the bed. You know, they just disappear on you. To me, that's one of the beauties and the strengths of this book is that we didn't, for example, uh, interview paranormal investigators who were out looking for the stuff. Now, I have one paranormal investigation story in the book, and it's one of my own, and I included it because of the photograph. It's the most unusual ghost photograph that I have ever taken in all of my years of investigation, and it came from a haunted bed and breakfast in Gettysburg. I was there with a group of paranormal investigators. We had rented out the entire bed and and breakfast and we were doing our research for EVPs electronic voice phenomena we were out on the battlefield and we were hoping to collect phenomena. Uh, I took random photographs of the grounds in my room. I, I did have noises, uh, unaccounted noises going on in, in the carriage house where I was staying uh, that were very typical of haunting phenomena. But one of the pictures I took showed two images of a male and a female. They looked like a boy and a girl, or maybe a boy and his young mother, very clearly staring out from one of the um, window areas. And it was not just ref uh, weird reflections on the glass. That's the common uh, argument that skeptics make is that, well, it's, it's uh, a pattern that your brain is trying to fit into something you want to see. Uh, no, this is very clear. And I wondered if they uh, were residual uh, energies, if they had once stayed at this old farmhouse, if they had lived um, in in the wartime era. Um, certainly not every ghost in Gettysburg is going to be from the war, um, but these two were dressed in 19th century period clothing. And it just astonished me. Um, and so I did include that story in the book. Uh, the rest of the, the stories were people who were startled, um, and some of them in, in uh, a, a kind of a holy cow uh, sort of way when, when things happened to them unexpectedly. In putting these stories together, did you find any evidence, and we have to address the skepticism in our audience that we see, 
Did you at all find anyone who's just making things up? And is there a sign of that if it happens? Um, hoaxing is always um, a tough question for paranormal investigators because there's always some hoaxing that goes on. And uh, usually it, it happens in cases where uh, people are trying to sort of send you up, you know, um, where they will uh, approach a known paranormal investigator with a, a story and uh, hopes that they um, they sell it as real, so to speak. Or if uh, there's like a wave of activity, like we've had a wave of uh, sightings of flying humanoids in Chicago this year, and there has been some hoaxing um, of reported sightings in regard to that, but simply because it's gotten so much media attention. There's always somebody who wants to kind of... Uh, muck things up a bit. There's no hard and fast telltale signs, Gene, and over the years, I think uh, investigators just kind of rely on their gut instincts of what strikes them as genuine. Uh, there are certain uh, what I would call hallmarks to extraordinary encounters of all kinds that fit into a broad pattern. And if things get too much out of that pattern or too exaggerated, it's it's a red flag. Um, sometimes it's. You mean a case of overdoing it? Yeah, overdoing it. Um, if um, the ghost is too good, um, too detailed, uh, does too many physical things, for example. Um, apparitions. Uh, most ghosts are residual. Uh, they're leftover imprints. Uh, they're vague. Uh, sometimes they, they have the ability to, in a flash of a second, uh, look solid to people. But uh, if things are too Hollywood, for example, because um, Hollywood over-exaggerates. And so if objects are thrown around and people are thrown around and levitated and that, um, those are red flags. Not that they couldn't happen, but they're not real likely to happen. It's a case uh, then of maybe the fact that Hollywood is going to compress events, even in a biography. So it fits within two hours, plus or minus. If they're trying to be too much like Hollywood, you suspect it. Rosemary Ellen Guiley is here. The book is The Road to Strange. And we'll hear from Michael Bryan a little bit later. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S dot com. Frustrated trying to get business capital? Want to take the slow process and rejection out of the equation? GCNloans.com removes the slow, irritating approval process. Instead, get quick, simple funding. Powered by David Allen Capital, 80% of our pre-qualified clients are approved in days. Pre-qualify at GCNloans.com and get your money this week. It's that easy. GCNloans.com. That's GCNloans.com. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. 
At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Rosemary Ellen Guiley and I are talking about the road to strange and some of the case histories, but also how to possibly recognize when someone tries to fake it. An example, one hallmark of a liar may be someone who tries to be too specific. Uh, too in specific details. and too too dramatic, uh, perhaps because they've watched um, a lot of paranormal reality shows and uh, and films which exaggerate things. All of those reality shows, even the ones that are quote unquote based on true stories, um, they have to exaggerate some things, even make them up in order to make the stories entertaining and interesting. Uh, I just saw one recently where I'm not going to name the show or, or the story, but uh, this really jumped out at me. And, and it was a couple who had purchased a house and it turned out to be very badly haunted. Uh, there'd been uh, a murder that had taken place in the house. So the show shows them one night, the two of them, being levitated together up off the bed. That is highly, highly unlikely and unusual. And when you listen to their description, neither one of them says they were levitated off the bed. They said they both had an experience in their bedroom where they saw a black mass and experienced the same thing, but they never ever said they were levitated. And so, you know, this is how uh, the program uh, makes it more interesting to the viewer. Well, somebody who's trying to hoax a story usually doesn't know a lot about real paranormal experiences, and so they incorporate a lot of these over-exaggerated characteristics into their story. Uh, that can be a giveaway. It's an inexact art trying to size up witnesses. Many times uh, the witnesses, um, they, they uh, are very reluctant to tell their stories because they're afraid of being ridiculed. Um, people who come forward too easily with uh, hugely dramatic stories, you'd want to look at them a little more carefully. Again, I used to know somebody, and I won't mention that person's name now because most people will not have heard it, but he did the same thing. He was trying to get us involved in a scheme. And in retrospect, I realized one of the telltale pieces of evidence of deception was that everything he would tell us had such exquisite detail, like he was trying to read it from a novel. And of course, we don't do things that way. Interesting to know. Most encounters with spirits and beings, most of them, they happen very quickly. And so your recall of that uh, is, is going to have a lot of holes in it. Uh, you might remember certain things about an appearance, but not everything. And so when appearances get um, really sketched in and um, uh, there might be... Um, extended conversation. Uh, now, people do have telepathic conversation uh, with, with beings, uh, and we've got some stories in, in the next book, the alien book, about that. Uh, they fall into the category of uh, repetitive and extended abductions, and I think that's a little different than the one-offs. Um, but uh, uh, it, it's hard to gauge sometime and sometimes, and you know, nobody wants to be taken in uh, by um, uh, somebody who's who's made something up. Um, but um, the more Hollywood it is, uh, the more careful you have to be. Now, the stories that Michael collected were people he met on his travels, and you know, he asked them to share anything unusual that had happened to them. Um, we've also solicited stories. We put out, uh, for example, solicitations in social media. If you had uh, an unusual paranormal experience, we'd like to hear about it. 
And uh, the people who are motivated to respond um, usually are, are genuine. Um, and um, they kind of want to, sometimes they, they want to get something off their chest. Uh, and they think you're a sympathetic ear and you're not going to laugh at them. And so uh, so they will tell you. They find you as the victim. I guess also people might look at you as a possible mark because you're active in the field. Maybe we can fool her because they don't believe it themselves. Well, uh, this is a hazard for, I think, all researchers and investigators like myself in the field. Um, The the more well-known you are, uh, the more uh, people might want to try and trip you up uh, or, quote unquote, sell you, convince you uh, of something that, um, you know, has no basis in fact uh, or has been heavily embroidered. I've had um, cases that, that I have received um, that I just had the, you know, intuitive feeling right off the bat that something was off about it. Something was not right. Um, sometimes that emerges in follow-up questioning and interviewing because it's, it's very hard for phony stories to hold together. They fall apart somewhere. And if you dig deep enough, um, they will start falling apart. Well, one way, you know, let me ask you a quick question here, if it's something you can bring up readily. What was possibly the craziest hoax ever anyone ever tried to perpetrate on you? Well, um, I, I can't say that I've had anything um, drama-worthy, headline-worthy. Uh, I've certainly had people send me a lot of EVPs uh, over the years that, um, were obviously faked, uh, and um, I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to figure out a lot of them, um, that uh, the voices are too clear, um, they have too much um, vocal cord intonation to them, uh, and they the EVPs say too much, Um And um, that's probably one of the worst photographs. I'm being sent photographs all the time. Um, And um, sometimes it's it's a case of people, um, you know, they really think they've got something. And then they're disappointed when I say, well, I don't think so. Um, I think here's the natural explanation for that. But... um, the photographs are probably the biggest hazard today because it's so easy to do things with Photoshop. And um, a skilled person can hide a lot of tracks in Photoshop. Uh, but there are still giveaways. Um, things like um, oh, um, hooded entities marching out of doorways uh, that are, are too well-defined. Uh, most people don't realize that ghosts and spirits um, don't really show hands and feet. Uh, so if you get a, an apparitional photo that uh, shows legs and shoes and things like that, it's probably fake. Um, and um, I, I would say those are the most common things I've gotten. So um, I don't think anybody's tried to set me up with a doozy, at least not yet, knock on wood. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. I used to know somebody a long time ago who perpetrated hoaxes, but not very well, I don't think. That was Jim Mosley. Remember him? Oh, I do. Yes. And he and his pal, Gray Barker, would do some really, really, really strange stuff. And, you know, was sending letters out. It was faking photos. They had something called the Lost Creek Photo. And with such a stupid photo, I think they just took some kind of wire and held a model in front of an old-fashioned film camera to create a photo of a UFO. And for years after that, Gray Barker would go out and lecture about it. Jim Mosley would lecture on it. And finally, you know, he confessed that it was just sheer fakery. But till then, you know, you wonder, did this have any value And he once said to me, the reason that they do this, other than just to get their jollies off or something, or because they were drunk and had no real control over what they were doing, it was mostly about 
keeping the UFO field active at times when there weren't many sightings. Well, if we don't have a lot of sightings, let's create one. Our guest is Rosemary Ellen Guiley, Michael Bryan, joining us soon because you're in the Paracast. Neighbors, we've made such a deal with HelloFresh, and it means that everyone listening to this show can receive $30 off your first week of deliveries when you go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code PARACAST30. You know, with HelloFresh, you can choose the delivery day that works best for you. They've got a wide variety of chef-curated recipes that change weekly. And can you imagine me cooking Japanese panko chicken. It makes me feel like I'm a chef. It means also that you could actually get your meal cooked in 30 minutes. For busy people, this is perfect. The simple recipes include step-by-step instructions so even I can figure it out. Go to HelloFresh.com, use the offer code PARACAST30 to get $30 off your first week of deliveries. HelloFresh.com. People search the internet for everything, including you. With a few clicks, information from your past can be quickly discovered. From business deals gone wrong, to misleading reviews, negative articles, and unflattering images. Studies show 78% of people search for someone online before doing business with them. Will they find the real you? With ReputationDefender.com, you can establish a positive internet presence. ReputationDefender.com pioneered the field with over a decade of experience, serving thousands of successful individuals and businesses. We use patented, award-winning systems to boost positive content and suppress negative material. Don't let the internet define you. Take control of your reputation today with ReputationDefender.com. For your quick, free reputation analysis, call 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771, 800-831-0771, or visit reputationdefender.com. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18-wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our responsibility. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Message and data rates may apply. Guys, got hair loss? I know what you're thinking. Should I shave my head? Comb it over? Wear a hat? Just stop. This isn't 1970. Keep your hair and your confidence because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration expert, can give you your real hair back permanently. Check them out today because they're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card to everyone who texts EASY66 to 85850. Dude, you don't have to look like your dad because this isn't your dad's hair loss treatment. People all over the country trust Bosley because they're ahead of the curve. They use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. And the best part, Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Let them show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Text EASY66 to 85850. Ask about the Bosley Guarantee. E-A-S-Y-66 to 85850. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We're joined now by Rosemary Ellen Guiley's compatriot on The Road to Strange Travel Tales of the Paranormal and Beyond. Michael Bryan. Michael, welcome to the Paracast. 
Thank you. Can you tell our listeners briefly about your background and what led you to do this? Okay. Uh, I carved a, an interesting new niche in psychology. I was a traditional graduate student on my way to becoming a clinical psychologist, and I decided, no, I don't want to do that. I had been bitten by the travel bug, and I decided I wanted to make travel a major part of my life. So I focused in psychology on the whole idea of what travel is all about and what kind of effects it has on people, how we affect other people in our travels, how they affect us. And I actually carved that niche uh, into a PhD at the University of Hawaii. Okay. Are you the only one who ever got that degree? It was basically a social psychology degree, but I focused in on all sorts of subjects that had to do with travel like intercultural communication, uh, nonverbal behavior, human spatial behavior. I I began to study all sorts of things uh, that take place when you travel uh, and differences between your culture and other cultures. So I just made that as an area of specialization. Then I went on over many years of teaching graduate and undergraduate courses, mainly in psychology and business. I went on to interviewing nearly 2,000 people, collecting travel stories, from anyone and just about anyone I could find in my travels and back home. And I collected thousands of stories. And that's how uh, Rosemary and I began to talk about doing a book series on some of these stories of of things such as the paranormal. So according to all these stories you got, some were just very conventional and some where they encountered weird stuff. Now, before you got involved in this, did you have any particular opinion about this or was this something, gosh, that is weird? Well, that's a really good question because I had, I'm going to say about maybe 5% of all the various stories that people told me about their travels. I noticed, I, I began to notice that they dealt with some of the paranormal sorts of subjects and rightly so because strange things happen to people when they travel because they're more open to it. And so it's it's not strange at all, <laughs> to coin a term here. It's not unusual at all that people would share some of their paranormal kinds of experiences as interesting things that happen to them when they travel. So basically because you're relaxed, you don't have the pressures of work, one hopes. You don't I have your that, iPhone also- or your Samsung constantly ringing in your ear. You are sensitive to stuff like this. I think that travel tends to open you up. Uh, You begin to experiment more, take more uh, opportunities to do new things. The pace is a lot faster. And suddenly then uh, new experiences can include those that are pretty strange. Now, when did you decide with Rosemary to put some of the more interesting cases into book form? Well, I've known Rosemary into the last century. <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like we're antiquated at all. but Well, you see, I'm antiquated, so I understand that. I resemble that remark. Thank you. I uh, got to know Rosemary through my other interest in ufology. Uh, I was highly involved with that, going to many, many conferences. So Rosemary and I crossed paths many times. And, of course, in conversations you begin to learn things about one another, about their interests. And we saw we had a a common interest in uh, some of these strange subjects, uh, including the paranormal and ufology. Uh, I'd like to let Rosemary tell this, but it was kind of a synchronicity how we crossed paths again after not having seen each other for a period of time. And then we started talking uh, about our life's experiences and the kinds of travel tales that I've been interviewing people with regularly, suddenly uh, the idea of a a book series evolved. It was actually a a travel synchronicity. And uh, that's one of the things that we do discuss in The Road to Strange, uh, how weird synchronicities happen to people. And um, as I mentioned in the first hour, Gene, I travel out to the Seattle area every summer to spend time with my family. And I put up a post on social media about being out there. And Michael saw it and said, guess what? I live in Bainbridge Island now. And uh, if he hadn't seen my post, you know, because you don't see everybody's posts, these are all algorithms, but it was, we were meant to reconnect. 
we got together for lunch and the series was born. We have uh, a number of books planned for this under uh, various themes. Of course, you were mentioning working on a UFO oriented book. I'm going to ask you, Michael, before we go on now, Rosemary and I spent a little time earlier in the show about all this new publicity about UFOs, about a secret government project that somehow was instigated by former Senator Harry Reid. What's your perception of the current state of UFO research? Well, I find it very, very, very interesting. Uh, suddenly, and, and we've heard this from time to time over the years, oh, there's going to be some disclosure or there's going to be major disclosure. And we've always go ho-hum, uh, sure, okay, tell me uh, what's, what's going to happen next about all this. But this is a little different. This is very unusual. Suddenly on the scene, we're, we're hearing uh, revelations from, from pilots. We're hearing uh, uh, from this man who uh, says that he had headed this Pentagon uh, UFO research story. But my feeling is, well, we've been hearing incredible cases by pilots, military and civilian for years and years Rosemary could attest to this as well. We have thousands, maybe tens of thousands of cases and stories of ufology. So when I hear Neil deGrasse Tyson talking on TV and, and, and kind of guffawing and poo-pooing this whole thing, I feel as if, and I, I've read 100 books on the subject, and I'm sure Rosemary has as well. And I don't know how many books Neil deGrasse Tyson read. If one, I'd be surprised. But it's no surprise to us uh, who have been involved with studying this field uh, about the reality of it and the strangeness of it. And so, okay, so now we hear a, a, a little revelation that uh, people are now beginning to talk about this in higher circles. Well, I think it goes way deeper than that. I think uh, we'll find out that there's been interest uh, in our government by our government and many other governments all along, and it goes much deeper and it's much more involved than this simple re revelation that just took place. That's in my humble opinion. The only question I have, and we'll get into more of it in the next segment before we go on with the book, is that if we have this new interest, what's been going on for the past 70 years? And doesn't that also put the lie to the possibility that we really captured anything strange or unknown in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947, because if we did, why would we need this new study? I'm Gene Steinberg. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and we have Michael Bryan. You're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Anytime, any place, anywhere, radio remains the most intimate of all forms of media. At home, at work, in the car, on smartphones. Over 90% of consumers still listen to radio every week. That makes choosing radio as a place to advertise your business one of the best decisions you can make. Email advertise at GCNlive.com and partner up with an experienced GCN representative. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Do you have difficulty taking supplements? Are you searching for a high-quality, complete nutritional drink that your whole family will love? Nutramedical's Life Support has arrived. All of your daily nutritional requirements in one quick, delicious drink. Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support is a proprietary blend of vegan protein, activated vitamins, essential minerals, amino acids, probiotics, green tea, digestive enzymes, anti-inflammatories, cancer prevention, detoxification, and much more. Your body will high-five you for this one. Life Support is the best complete nutritious 
meal replacement on the market. Whether you are an elite athlete, have post-operative challenges, chronic illness, elderly, or a family that just wants a quick, delicious drink, try Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support for optimized nutrition in one great-tasting smoothie. Just add cold water, almond milk, fruit, or anything else you like. Nutramedical's Life Support. Try our great-tasting chocolate or vanilla today. Call 888-212-8871 or visit us online at Nutramedical.com. Nutramedical.com for the whole family. Are you happy washing your hands with harsh chemicals? Are you happy doing laundry with detergents? Are you happy paying high prices? Find your happiness with Pure Soap. These all-natural, earth-friendly Pure Soaps are the very best you've ever used. Buy in bulk. Get a 12, 36, or 48-month supply. Or get items individually and still save big. You're getting soap products twice as good as what you're using now. Earth-friendly and natural soaps. Your family deserves the best. Happiness is 5starsoap.com. Why not put your money up the drain for a change? See them at 5starsoap.com or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Cal Bend Soap Company can save you thousands of dollars and give you good old-fashioned real soaps that are triple concentrated. Soaps made from vegetable and coconut oils. See their full selection of soaps at 5starsoap.com. That's F-I-V-E starsoap.com. Or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Have you ever wondered who the second person to discover gravity was? Hmm. When you're in the mood for a treat, would you go to the second best bakery in town? Or how about the name John Breckenridge? Recognize it? If you don't, that's because he came in second to Abraham Lincoln. The firsts are first for a reason. Just how ID Stronghold was the first to create the technology to protect your credit cards from thieves with RFID chip scanners. ID Stronghold products block signals from those scanners, so thieves can't capture your critical data. Get a stronghold on your personal information and protect your family too. Don't settle for the second best wallet. Pick up ID Stronghold wallets for everyone on your list this holiday season. They're the perfect stocking stuffer, with leather wallets starting as low as $20 on Walmart com eBay, Amazon, and QVC. Save 10% by using coupon code PRESENT for a limited time. That's coupon code PRESENT only on IDStronghold.com. IDStronghold.com. This is Jacques Vallée. You're listening to the podcast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Thanks to Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Michael Bryan. The book is The Road to Strange Travel, Tales of the Paranormal and Beyond. And we're taking a bit of a detour into UFOs again with Michael Bryan, who just joined us on the episode. So, Michael, if we're going to have this investigation now, what are UFOs? (laughs) If we capture the spaceship in 1947, wouldn't we have known already? Well, that's a good point. But does that mean that it's necessarily revealed at this time? Uh, of what the past history is with the subject. Uh, Is the public ready for full disclosure of all that this entails? I have to feel that much more is known about this uh, in higher circles uh, than the little bit of tidbits that we happen to be privy to currently. So therefore, this is just public relations or something, this news of a recent investigation? I'm not saying that... I, I think in a way it's a it's a feeler, and it's just interesting to me that the little bit that has come out, uh, how seriously and shall we say honestly the media has picked up on this and seems to be open to it rather than poo pooing the whole subject. Uh, you see a little bit more feeling and thought that well, gee, maybe there is something to this. So let's pay more attention. Well, the thing I see is. It's just treated as another story. And very few of the cable TV talking heads I've heard do anything more and say, this is a fascinating segment. Let's see what's going on. Not more than that. I mean, they're so overwhelmed with the news of the day and a certain person putting out his latest tweet that they don't focus on this heavily. But all the major cable networks, doesn't matter what your point of view is, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, they've all had segments about this. Uh, I think it's a a case of uh, toe dipping. 
maybe they are cautious and want to gauge the reaction uh, from all around of how these news stories are being received. Uh, I wouldn't expect them after years of totally disregarding and avoiding the subject to suddenly now jump in head first. Uh, I'd say they're just dipping their toes for now. We're going to have to see what happens. Chris and I will be talking about this and certainly you two, as you come on future episodes, we can pursue it further. Let's get back to that book. I wanted to ask you about a few tales perhaps you can tell us, just some case histories to get a sense of what The Road to Strange is all about. And the very first item under Ghosts and Hauntings is The Blood-Soaked Man. And that sounds almost like the TV show Criminal Minds on the basis of the title. What happened here, Michael? The Blood-Soaked Man was a a very interesting story of uh, a woman uh, residing in Paris uh, in her travels and just taking a casual walk along a boulevard in Paris that no doubt had some connection, uh, history uh, in the past of violent, uh, significant events that took place. And here she was suddenly confronted with what appeared to be a man uh, just totally soaked in blood from perhaps some very horrible situation that he was in. And what was strange was Nobody else seemed to pay attention or even notice it. And it's one of these situations where on a normally crowded street or boulevard anywhere in the world, there would be lots of people. But she strangely didn't really notice very many, if anybody else. She may have been the only one to perceive this. Uh, And this is what's interesting. No matter what the paranormal experience may be, it's not always the case that more than one person uh, is a witness to the same event. Sometimes there are multiple witnesses, but sometimes in an odd, strange way, it's in a kind of a nether world, uh, kind of an ex- existence where somebody has a, a strange paranormal sorts of sort of experience uh, and uh, may not be quite able to share it with anybody else. So it seems in this case, She saw, she was a witness to something that involved maybe history repeating itself. And again, this apparition appeared. No one else seemed to be noticing it. Her dog, I don't think, seemed to be noticing it. And then the blood-soaked man simply disappeared into a courtyard, not to be seen again, but maybe by somebody else at another time. Rosemary, this is an important point. How often do we find something like this happening? where one or a few people see something, but others do not. Does this require a special sensitivity? What's your perception? Speaking of sensitivities. Yes, it is quite common for um, there to be like one eyewitness to something and others around them do not notice. It's almost like suddenly they're encased in some special bubble of time and space. I think a lot of it has to do with sensitivity. We we all have a different antenna, so to speak. Uh, actually, a better way of looking at it would be like a, a radio tuner to the unseen because it's vibrating at different frequencies from uh, consensual reality. There are people who have such a good uh, radio radio tuner to these frequencies that they're constantly having unusual experiences wherever they go. And for other people, it's often a matter of the perfect storm of circumstances. They're in the right place at the right time, in the right state of consciousness. And so here's this woman walking her dog down the street. She's in a very distracted state of mind. And that's when many people have their extraordinary experiences. They're not thinking about anything in particular. They're not uh, unhappy. They're usually happy or at least distracted. Suddenly, uh, their radio tuner goes to a bandwidth where this uh, experience is happening. And the blood-soaked man was probably what what we would call a residual ghost. He may have uh, been, uh, for example, a victim of his clothing was fairly contemporary. That is, it wasn't period like the 1700s or 1800s. 
So perhaps he had been uh, mortally wounded in uh, one of the world wars. And so here he is, uh, tr maybe he was trying to get back home, but he's staggering down uh, the street, uh, which had been there for a very long time, and bleeding profusely, but not leaving bloody footprints or any, any blood uh, on the sidewalk. He disappears into this courtyard, which maybe that had been where he lived, or maybe he was seeking refuge. And so this is like a track that plays over and over again. And someone else walking down that street at the right time in the right state of mind might see him as well. But he does this all the time, this this residual apparition, and most of the time nobody has the right sensitivity to tune in. So that implies that this is a sensitivity maybe you can develop or you either have it or you don't. We all have natural psychic intuitive ability to some degree, and all of us can develop it. Uh, more than what we've got. Some of us are going to be super in that regard, you know, natural mediums, uh, very good psychics from the get-go, dramatic experiences in childhood and so on. And other people can develop it. Uh, you, you definitely can. Paranormal uh, investigation in and of itself will usually develop psychic ability because you're constantly in environments where uh, you're training yourself to experience the unseen. Um, so, uh, for a lot of people, these experiences, if they have no marked psychic ability, uh, they're like one-offs. They might have one or several over the course of time. They become just one of those things, one of those oddities. We've got much more to come with Rosemary Ellen Guiley, Michael Bryan. The book is The Road to Strange Travel Tales of the Paranormal and Beyond. Next week, we're going to hear from Lauren Coleman about his new book, Mothman Evil incarnate how about that that's next week i'm gene we have michael and rosemary you're in the paracast <laughs> Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Most people think life insurance pays after you're dead. That's true. But did you know you can have tax-free access to your life insurance while you're still alive? You can use the life benefits of your life insurance to grow your money with certainty and guarantees. No stock market risk, no tax risk, and no penalties. Call Life Benefits if you'd like a free book about how this can be done. Call 702-660-7000. That's 702-660-7000. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com, virtual care anywhere.
Are you retired or facing retirement and you're afraid your income is going to be less than you'd like? I'm Pharmacist Keith. Dr. Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy, and I want to show you a low-cost way to create your own business, working around your current schedule, creating extra income that will last for years to come by joining Dr. Wallach's crusades, spreading his message of better health. To learn more, visit radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com, radio.recordedvideo.com, or call 866-257-3105 for a recorded message. Hello, my name is Marjorie Wildcraft. I'm the founder of The Grow Network, which is an online community of people who produce their own food and medicine. We are really into backyard self-reliance. If you want this lifestyle, I suggest your first step be to learn some basic home medicine. Just the other day, my 18-year-old son came to me and said, Mama, I got a sore throat. Can you fix me up? And I said, Sure, Ryan. And in about 24 hours, he was better. The best home medicine for you to start out with is garlic. It's an amazing natural antibiotic, and I can show you how to use garlic to handle ear infections, sore throats, colds, and flus. As a way for you to get to know a little bit more about me and the Grow Network, I've written up an easy introduction on how to use garlic. It's at gcnwellness.com. Now, the station manager told me that I needed to say the URL at least twice, even though it feels kind of weird. But if you're interested in backyard self-reliance, you are one of us. Go to www.gcnwellness.com and let's connect up. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Rosemary tells me she's wanted to do that for about five years now. I'm and embarrassing. I finally got to do it. But we could give Michael his chance next. The book is The Road to Strange. Oh, no, I'm scared. Okay. Oh, listen. Uh, listen, we've gotten some pretty unusual people to do this, and their reality changes completely. Now, when you talk about this, the ability of some people to see a psychic occurrence or a UFO, or whatever, and some are sensitive, some are not, you almost feel as if it's kind of like broadcasting, where there are thousands of channels of data coming out there. And if you have the antenna and you have the TV tuner and you pick up channel seven, Or you get your 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. All the waves are out there. You only have to have the mechanism by which to tune it in. But that also raises a question here. Number one, it's the human possibly being sensitive to Channel 17 or whatever it is. Can you have a machine, maybe? Anyone thought of that? A machine that could just tune you into different realities. Well, certainly in the paranormal gene, we've had intense efforts in the past couple of decades to perfect machines that will uh, do these sorts of things or augment human ability uh, in some way. And the research for that goes back um, much, much uh, longer, even to the advent of the machine age and the telegraph, the telephone, the phonograph, um, you know, well, uh, well over a, a century in the modern era of ghost hunting, there's been a concerted effort to to do these and uh, various devices that will pick up either visual or audio or some sort of sensory information. And it's a very uneven playing field. For one thing, these devices are not calibrated against anything. What are you going to calibrate against uh, when you're when you're dealing with the unseen? Do we know, for example, that if you have um, a radio and you put it on a certain frequency level or between between stations, uh, are you going to be able to tune into something? Uh, well, there are many radio-based devices. They're called Radio Sweep, where they sweep the AM or FM band and create kind of a jumbled noise that's very similar to white noise. But there have also been a lot of exper- experiments done at certain uh, hertz frequencies. Not surprisingly, 
uh, because of the subjective nature, and the wild card here is human consciousness, uh, and the subjective nature of experience, what works for one person will often not work for another person. And so, of course, what does science do with this? They can't do anything with it except discard it. Uh, and that's one of the problems in the field. The consciousness, the factor of human consciousness seems to have a, a, a great deal of influence on A, whether we have the experience and B, how we have the experience. Well, certainly the biggest thing in science is we have to repeat what's going on, that, repeatability. That's right. But if you have random occurrences, unpredictable occurrences, you can't repeat them. And that's probably one reason why serious scientists, quote unquote, will not often embrace subjects like this. It's because it's so random. We don't know what's happening. We go to a subject who saw a UFO, someone else saw Bigfoot or a ghost. Well, how do you reproduce that? It's just an anecdote unless there's the hope of physical evidence. That's right. You cannot replicate it. And even if you took a, a radio suite device for EVP into the same environment repeatedly uh, and ran that device, you would not get the same results in any two occasions. It does make serious research from a scientific perspective very problematic. And uh, researchers have found also that if they have uh, and this is where it gets way too far out for science. If they have a personal relationship with their devices, that is, if they handle them, if they put their energy into them, there is a um, there's some sort of energy bond that happens between uh, equipment and the operator that augments results as well. In other words, uh, love your technology. Love your technology, absolutely. And it's, it's also not a very democratic playing field in terms of the kinds of things you tune into. A person whose antenna is tuned to ghosts may not have any UFO or ET experiences and vice versa. And so why not? Are they at completely different uh, ends of, of some sort of energy spectrum? Is it somebody's personal orientation? Uh, people who seem to have really marked abilities, that is their boundary between the physical world and the unknown or the paraphysical is extremely thin, they tend to have more across the board sorts of experiences. But when I interview experiencers, I find that they tend to cluster in some area, some part of the spectrum of, of, the, uh, of the extraordinary. It's not uniformly across the board. Um, and even though we can't replicate things, there are patterns that can be ascertained. There are certainly patterns and consistencies from uh, people's eyewitness accounts. Um, there are patterns and consistencies in people's personal histories as well, in terms of when they started experiencing the paraphysical and in what way. And does it run in families? Yes, it does. You see, this is one of the arguments I have with people like MUFON, where they treat UFOs as an external event. Well, you just saw an auto accident. You just saw that plane. It's external to you. It's not part of you. And you're not a participant in the event unless you're somehow involved, like in the accident. And I think that basically drops a heavy portion of the available data. Well, I, I would agree with that. And Michael, I don't know uh, how you ran into that with MUFON because, you know, you spent so much time with them, but I found MUFON's attitudes just very frustrating. Well, I um, have basically been a loner, e even though I participated with MUFON and APRO at one point. But APRO, I that's ancient history, APRO. Yes, yes, I know. I got involved with that a little bit, and then I... Uh, gravitated towards MUFON more because it seemed to be expanding and moving in a lot of different areas and directions and building up people who are involved in it all. But I, I wanted to add two things to the uh, conversation uh, from a little bit before, and that is imagine that there are super scientists out there that are very concerned with artificial intelligence. Can you imagine what the situation could be like when the machines begin to discover how to <laughs> read minds, say human minds, and we as humans have not quite gotten there yet. That's a little bit of a scary thought. But let me also just go back to my experience as a graduate student in psychology. 
noticing that if people uh, began to deal with things they didn't understand, they, they tended to shove it under the carpet and not deal with it at all. And, and I felt that uh, social science, and, and probably the same is true with some of the physical scientists and sciences, that uh, what people don't understand and can't deal with in an empirical way because we don't have tools yet in order to maybe deal with it adequately, the easiest thing to do is to deny it. Uh, and so uh, I got very disgruntled when I discovered that scientists, quote unquote, were very often uh, the people who were as closed minded as skeptics and debunkers who just refuse to look at data that they just don't understand how quite to measure it yet. Well, that certainly creates other problems. Let's look at some more case histories as we continue with this episode. And we have about five segments left. We're just about to wrap up. But having gone from ghosts, that one ghost episode, I wanted to look into mysteries and time slips because then we get into the interdimensional stuff. So you've got an article or a piece here called Lost in Space and Time. And we've got maybe about 50 seconds left for the segment before we have to split for another one. Maybe you can start, Michael, talking about it, and then we'll pick up on the next piece. Yeah, because I uh, that was a story that was contributed by Rosemary, and she has more familiarity with, with that story. But uh, basically, really quickly, it, it seems to be a story of a person in his own space-time uh, continuum uh, was trying to get to uh, some place to uh, be involved in a political meeting just prior to the elections. And he wound up instead in an area of the country that was paranormal. And I, I'd like to let Rosemary talk about that. That has more to do with the Mothman case in uh, West Virginia. Oh, yeah. And I was mentioning before, Lauren Coleman's going to be here next week to talk about Mothman. So this is a good segue. So we'll talk to Rosemary in our next segment about Lost in Space and Time. I'm Gene Steinberg. She's Rosemary Ellen Guiley. We also have Michael Bryan. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.theparacast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Want revenge on the common housefly? Well, after 10,000 years, someone has finally come up with a better way. The Bug Assault, a miniaturized shotgun, which utilizes ordinary table salt as ammunition. Non-toxic and no batteries required. So much fun, you'll forget you have a wife and kids. $39.95 and free economy shipping. Use discount code GCN and get an extra 10% off your purchase at BugAssault.com. Makes the perfect stocking stuffer. Get your Bug Assault today. Yeah! 
Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Michael Bryan is one of our best people, almost up there with Rosemary Ellen Guiley and <laughs> Nick Redfern and Chris O'Brien, whose voice is turned to something like a Bigfoot these days. Rosemary, lost in space and time, tell us more. This involves a man who set out from his home in Indiana to go to South uh, Carolina to attend a political rally. And he had um, all of his maps uh, and or his driving plan, his time set. If he left the house at a certain time, he would arrive in time for the early evening activities. And something goes awry on the trip. Now, um, he winds up in West Virginia, and I must say that West Virginia has a number of cases of time slips on roads uh, where people are driving along and they find that they lose time or they're suddenly not where they think they were or there's something very unusual about their surroundings that uh, shifts in a sudden way. So uh, as he's driving along, uh, the trip starts taking longer than he anticipated. He's losing time. And he finds that he's not on the route that he had planned. And he gets so confused that he thinks, well, maybe I better get a map. Uh, so he try, tries to get off the freeway. Then he can't find any place that sells a map. I mean, how many gas stations don't yeah. have maps? Uh, or convenience stores that don't have maps of some sort, but he can't find a map anywhere. Now, he had intended to be in South Carolina by 5 p.m., and he winds up instead at 9 p.m. in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, on the eve of the Mothman Festival, and uh, which is in its own weird little timescape. My husband and I came into the hotel in town uh, right behind him to check in, he says that he's here for the event. Well, everybody thinks that, well, that's the Mothman event. And uh, the woman at the desk says, well, here's one of your speakers right behind you. And he turns and looks at him. He says, oh, so you must be a sentinel. Mm-hmm. And I, I had no idea what he was talking about. But we determine that he literally thinks he is in South Carolina or somewhere where he needs to be for this political rally. He's having a very hard time coming to terms with the fact that he has gotten way off track, hundreds of miles off track, to wind up in a tiny little place called Point Pleasant. What happens then for the next day or so is that he's in his own reality. He's on his cell phone talking to people about attending the rallies. And um, he leaves the hotel and goes across the street to the Mothman Museum and wants to know when the rallies are starting. A- after about, uh, the, at about the end of the day, he disappears. Um, he uh, tells the woman at, at the desk that he's, he's figured out how to get where he needs to go. He contemplated going home, but now he knows uh, how he can get there, and he leaves. But how he got hundreds of miles off track and lost all this time and the bizarre circumstances of not being able to find uh, reorienting maps and then also being in some sort of his own bubble of reality where he can't even grasp where he is, it was just all very bizarre. Now, I have interviewed other drivers and truckers, especially truckers who drive the same routes in various parts of West Virginia, and there are portions of highways that are known for missing time and uh, where you can be driving along and the environment around you will shift and change. And usually the change is in a fashion where everything looks kind of dead and still and silent. There's no life. There's no animals. There's no people. And you're miles off track and and, uh, it takes you uh, six hours to get somewhere when it should have taken three. Uh, This has happened to truckers a fair amount along certain routes in West Virginia. So what happens? Do people go through Uh, bubbles? Do they get caught up in time warp bubbles? This is the first time I've heard of such an experience tracking multi-state like this from Indiana heading to uh, South Carolina. But West Virginia is 
a, a very strange area. And if he got deflected into West Virginia, I could see how something totally disoriented then happens. Oh, my heavens. That reads like a episode of Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they really do sound like Twilight Zone stories. And we've got some other time slips in the book uh, as well. But the point is, Gene, that these things literally do happen. And I suspect they happen more than we realize. That uh, linear time is um, has all these bubbles in it or holes uh, or it's fluid. And we have these bleed-throughs into other timescapes and realities. Now, I'm just looking on the map. So we have Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And then we have South Carolina, say Charleston. I used to live in Charleston, South Carolina. The distance is 526 and a half miles via I-77 going south. So it's a straight route, straight shot. And that will take about eight hours if you had to drive from one location Mm -hmm. to the next. That's weird. Maybe they used a Stargate. Yeah. (laughs) But the other bizarre thing was that nobody could convince this guy that he was not in the right place. Now, I don't know how you mistake um, a a 19th century um, hotel, which is the only hotel in Point Pleasant, how you mistake that hotel for some Hyatt uh, in uh, South Carolina where he was headed. Um, and when you are repeatedly told that this is Point Pleasant and the event here is the Mothman Festival and doesn't seem to penetrate. Now, just to show you about the difference, Point Pleasant has a population of 4,350 as of the 2010 census. I mean, it's a small town. Right. It is. It's very small. It's, um, it's an old river town at the confluence of the Kanawha and Ohio rivers. Uh, And uh, there's not a whole lot that goes on there. Well, unless you're doing a Mothman festival. Right. Now, he was headed for Greenville in South Carolina. So, um, but still, that's just like way, way off track. Just checking the distance That is probably 100 and some odd miles. It's a couple hours drive. So instead of eight hours, it's six hours, 18 minutes. So it's, you know, an hour and 42 minutes less. Still. Hmm. It's part of the same route, though. You just turn a different direction. When you get down to Charlotte, North Carolina, you'd make a different turn to get to, you don't want to hear this. You know, we're giving navigation advice, by the way. Either that or take the Stargate, okay? <laughs> so that works much better. Now, speaking of Twilight Zone kind of stuff and maybe x file stuff, there's a Telltale article in there called The Death Curse. I want to know about it. Who wants to volunteer to take that one? Michael, that's one of your stories. Okay, Uh This uh, story was told to me by one of my best friends, an ER doctor, and he uh, had a period of his life where he was uh, providing service as uh, part of his medical training, and he went to an Apache reservation and uh, was uh, helping people living on the reservation, and he uh, one day had met a uh, young woman uh, of Apache, uh, Apache descent, and they became friends. It, w- it wasn't anything particularly serious, but um, uh, they had a date. And uh, in those days, uh, probably more so than now, uh, there were people with very strict cultural and social mores and taboos about their relationships, let's say, with with the Caucasian uh, European descent uh, white man and people of, of Native ancestry, uh, you know, interacting. Uh, it was that way. Okay, so let's that. do our break here, and we'll continue with the story of the death curse with Gene, Michael, and Rosemary. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> A 
Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. 800-667-9035. That's 800-667-9035. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Rosemary Ellen Guiley, Michael Bryan. The book is The Road to Strange. Just loads and loads of fascinating tales and sometimes sound like Twilight Zone or Amazing Stories or Outer Limits. And Michael is telling us about the death curse. Go on, please. Yes, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. There's much detail uh, in the book on this. But anyway, they uh, had a friendship and the uh, young woman returned back to where she was living. And the aunt uh, saw that she had been out with this doctor and uh, got very, very upset. 
and apparently uh, thought that it was much more serious uh, than it was. I, I don't know. But Dave uh, began to suffer a, a series of mishaps, which just seemed not normal. He had a serious accident. He developed uh, hepatitis uh, and, and things that just didn't, they seemed out of place. Well, anyway, Dave uh, had always been interested in some of the strange subjects and he was very open to it. And he started inquiring around and he had been treating one of the uh, Apache elders who uh, had informed Dave when they had a conversation that he appeared to have had a curse placed on him. Now, uh, there's always stories of curses in, in lots of cultures, but in, in this situation, the Apache elder said, yes, there is a, a curse placed on you, but I can help you, I can help you take care of this. And then he saw the young woman again uh, after many months, and she said, well, shall we go out again? And Dave said, well, I don't think so, not after what happened to me the first time. I, I think I'll take a pass on this. But anyway, apparently uh, the aunt uh, had placed some sort of a curse on Dave, and uh, it was ameliorated. And it was just ironic. One day Dave was treating patients, and it so happened that the aunt came in to be treated one day, and she just turned white as a sheet when she saw Dave, because, uh, of course, she thought Dave would be no more. And uh, Dave had the compunction to say to her, he put his arm around her and he said, you placed a death curse on me, didn't you? Uh, well, it didn't work. And uh, fortunately, this is a situation where cool heads prevailed and whatever it was that influenced uh, the things that happened to Dave in his life did get taken care of. And maybe sometimes they don't. There's another story in the book that almost sounds like it's related because of curses. Under Encounters with the Dead, Wrath of the Dead. Who wants to take that one? Your turn, Rosemary. Oh, it's one of my favorite stories. This is from uh, Michael's collection. And uh, it, it concerns a, a man who was staying with a, a family in Papua New Guinea. Uh, and um, uh, he became friends with the family, got to know the mother while she was still alive, um, and um, uh, she died, the mother died, but she had had uh, kind of her favorite area on the property where she liked to sit in a rocking chair uh, in the afternoon and enjoy herself. Well, after she died, uh, one of the brothers decided to build a house. Uh, on the property and including on this particular spot. So he started putting a house up. He, he was told by another brother, don't do that. You're going to make mama mad. She won't like that. And uh, the brother who was building the house just ignored him and continued on. Well, the visitor became uh, very seriously ill. He uh, contracted malaria and was uh, quite ill uh, to the point where he was actually concerned that he might not survive. In, in tribal customs uh, in those areas, sometimes the ancestors are called upon to help in cases like that. So a big storm arose and passed, and uh, they were uh, the man recovered. He started feeling better, and uh, they were all sitting out on the porch uh, enjoying the night after the storm had passed. And uh, the brother who disapproved of the house stands up and points out into the jungle, and he says, look, mama's coming. Mama's coming and she's mad. He swore that he could see the spirit of uh, the dead mother marching down the path. She'd been buried in the jungle and she was coming down the path and she was in a wrath. She came to where the house was under construction and she just mowed it down. It just collapsed like a pile of matchsticks. Now, uh, the visitor, uh, who is the author of the story, uh, could not see anything except this house going down. At that point, this, the storm was long past. You know, it was barely a breeze blowing. And this house just collapses like a pile of matchsticks. And one of them was saying, see, see, I told you not to build the house there. I told you Mama wouldn't like it. And then as soon as the house is destroyed, she marches back into the jungle. And that was the end of it. 
Um, now, earlier than that, uh, there had been some discussion of calling upon Mama to help their sick friend. And so there was some speculation that she'd had a dual purpose, that she'd come out of the grave uh, to help this fellow who now was on the road to recovery. And when she saw the house, she was uh, not going to have it, and she tore it down. Well, the house was not rebuilt. Well, I would certainly understand that. It almost reminds me of the movie Poltergeist, the original one where all these homes were built on Indian burial grounds and where right. stuff was going on. Chris has joined us, by the way. Hi, Chris. I'm back. Hello, Chris. <laughs> Speaking Hi. of Poltergeist, I'm sorry, you guys. We've had a hell of a time here today. We have this really bad windstorm. We lost all our power. No cell phones, no nothing. I've been pulling my hair out. Well, we were talking about you behind your back, Chris. No, we weren't. Uh, I, if you were, I wouldn't. Uh, it, I probably deserved it. I don't know. I've, this is the first time I've ever seen both all the cell coverage and the Internet go down. I have no idea why I've been just pulling my hair out. I didn't know what the hell to do. So sorry about that. I'm back. Michael. Rosemary, uh, please accept my apologies. I, I was really looking forward to doing the show. Well, glad to have you back, at least for this portion. Yes, absolutely, Chris. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, you guys. Oh, man. That's what I, I get for living out in the, in the boondocks. Well, you see here, the other week we had a problem with the version of Skype that Chris was using. And it must be the Microsoft people who don't like the fact that he's used a Mac. But so have I. And but mm -hmm. I can run Windows on mine, and I do sometimes. So that's really paying respect to the gods at Microsoft. That's it. You know... I want to ask you about this one, Rosemary, and it could be either you or Michael, this story. I've always had problems with so-called fortune telling, predicting the future. And you've got an article here called The Fortune Teller in the book. And who wants to take that one? Well, Michael, why don't you? That, if it's clear in your mind, Rosemary, I think you should pick it up. It's the one in uh, Predictions and Fate. Gene Long. Yeah, uh, I'm just a little fuzzy on it right this minute. I'm sorry on that particular one. Well, maybe we'll take one well, of the other ones. That that was the one where the woman was told she was going to meet an interesting man on her travels, and she okay. does. Yeah, right. And uh, it's just interesting when fortune tellers make very specific predictions. We have Jean, we have Rosemary, we have Michael, and after the rain left, or the winds and all the inclement weather... We have Chris. You're in the Barricast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653, 877-886-3653. Actual testimonials from real Numana customers. I've tried all kinds of food storage, and Numana is by far the best. I'm a single mom with two teenage boys and a full-time job. I don't always have time to cook a four-course meal. That's where Numana has been such a blessing. I can spend less time in the kitchen and more time on what matters most, like helping with homework. Find out for yourself. Order online at thepowermall.com. That's thepowermall.com. Numana is... Food storage I love to eat. Yum! Thepowermall.com. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. 
New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. 800-667-9035. That's 800-667-9035. Hello, my name is Marjorie Wildcraft. I'm the founder of The Grow Network, which is an online community of people who produce their own food and medicine. We are really into backyard self-reliance. If you want this lifestyle, I suggest your first step be to learn some basic home medicine. Just the other day, my 18-year-old son came to me and said, Mama, I got a sore throat. Can you fix me up? And I said, Sure, Ryan. And in about 24 hours, he was better. The best home medicine for you to start out with is garlic. It's an amazing natural antibiotic, and I can show you how to use garlic to handle ear infections, sore throats, colds, and flus. As a way for you to get to know a little bit more about me and the Grow Network, I've written up an easy introduction on how to use garlic. It's at gcnwellness.com. Now, the station manager told me that I needed to say the URL at least twice, even though it feels kind of weird. But if you're interested in backyard self-reliance, you are one of us. Go to www.gcnwellness.com and let's connect up. So are you tired of being tired? Well, then it's time to get the tea. Hey, it's Lisa here to tell you about this all-natural, all-organic tea I've been drinking that has had great results for over 20 years. It's called Life Change Tea, and it's specially formulated to help detoxify and cleanse your kidneys, liver, colon, and blood all at once. The colon is one of the most ignored organs in the human body. The faster that waste is eliminated from the body, the less time that waste sits in our intestines spreading toxins to our bloodstream. This tea helps cleanse chemicals caused by outside intruders from our entire digestive system. And get this, weight loss can be a side effect. And with continued use of the tea, you can experience clear, healthier, younger looking skin, increased energy, and a happier outlook on life. So if you're tired of being tired, get the life change tea at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. And like me, you'll be glad you did. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. So, listeners, in case you're wondering what happened to Chris, weather intervened, knocked out his cell towers, knocked out his internet. It was, you know, whatever could happen, happened. We have Rosemary Ellen Guiley, Michael Bryan, and we're going to talk about the fortune teller. Michael. Yes. Okay. So in this particular case, a series of events uh, for the three people and the three stories we have that are similar uh, had all been fairly specific predictions. And the uh, people who were at the receiving end of these predictions swear that that these came true exactly as predicted. But there's one story in particular that I'm just totally amazed with, and this takes place in a little more exotic location. This was in Turkey. These were diplomats uh, with the U.S. government at, at one point there, and there was a meeting where the diplomatic officers had a luncheon, mainly uh, uh, the men of the families and the wives had a luncheon, and there was a, at a very good Turkish restaurant, I think it was Istanbul or Ankara, I'm not sure. They had a guest, a, a woman of, of gypsy descent, who proceeded around the table with the women uh, and uh, looked at their hands, took their hands and read their hands and made little predictions and then moved on to the next person. But what was odd was there was one woman that the uh, lady uh, took her hand said nothing and dropped her hand and moved on. And of course, the ladies there were not a little bit discombobulated over it. And uh, they were saying, well, why, why did you say something about, you know, to this woman about her hand? And the response simply was, as translated, but there was nothing there. And according to this tale, as it was told to me, that particular woman passed away some two days later after that. So maybe the fortune teller did not want to say negative events, or maybe she was looking ahead and simply did not see anything for that particular person. So that was very bizarre, very strange. Speaking well, of that would be a little disconcerting. 
it, it certainly made uh, some of the ladies afraid to get um, fortune telling uh, after that because yeah. uh, they were afraid that if they got passed over, what if the fortune teller took their hand and said nothing and dropped it, uh, were they going to die? And so it definitely had an impact on people. But she saw no future because the woman was about to pass. Yeah, yeah, apparently. I personally have had uh, experiences uh, that were rather disconcerting with uh, so-called fortune tellers. I was a kid, and um, this is in Washington State, and I went to a little sort of a carnival, and they had a, you know, a gypsy fortune teller there. And she, she told me that I was a, 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 a medieval Chinese warlord or something. And uh, I thought, I bet you she tells that to all the little boys, you know, I was what, 12 or 13. And, and then years later, uh, when I lived in Colorado, I had a woman who was uh, supposedly a seer. Um, she was coming and visiting her daughter, who was a friend of friend of mine. And uh, she took me aside and she, she looked at me and she started mumbling something about how I was a, a really nasty Chinese general in the <laughs> medieval China and that I had unfinished business with my girlfriend and we were going to have some real problems. I was thinking to myself, oh man, here we go. And, and then I realized and remembered that I had been told something very, very similar, except without as much detail years before when I was a kid. And <laughs> that kind of well, I'm not sure if it impressed me, but it freaked me out a little bit. And and sure enough, my relationship did not last much longer with uh, with my girlfriend. We like turned into cats and dogs. So I don't know. Maybe there's something to it. Uh, you know, coming from my own personal experience, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to argue with with that. Uh, you know, what are the odds? Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to one of my favorite subjects, synchronicity. And you've got a few stories here, and I'll let you folks choose. Rosemary, what is your favorite synchronicity tale from the book? Uh, well, gosh, most of the really good ones are, are things that happened to Michael. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll talk about that one. So sure. uh, I, I, I'm going to put crazy. that over to him. I, I've had many, many synchronicities. That I would say if, if that's my one... Uh, if you want to call it a gift or not, uh, I have had uh, not only the normal dose of single synchronicities or double ones, you know, running into people constantly in your travels. I had that a lot. But this one just beats, takes, takes the cake. Uh, I was going to a book fair where I was going to display my travel guide series to sightseeing by public transportation in New York City. I was living in uh, Ashland, Oregon. So I got on planes. I went to Philadelphia to visit my sister for a couple of days, got on the train to go to New York, passed a sign, just happened to look out of my train window and I saw a sign, Rahway, New Jersey. And I thought to myself, I know somebody that was from Rahway, New Jersey. A little bit of useless trivia while you're walling away a couple of hours on a train. I get to this uh, fair, this book fair, and I do that. And then I head back to Oregon. And this was, my arrival was the end of May. And then I, my return was the beginning of June, and I picked up uh, two Hemisphere magazines on the United flights to look at them and to later maybe ask United if they might mention my travel guide series in it, you know, normal thing to do. So I get back, and I go to my counter, and I look on my counter, and there is a big envelope. I open it up, and there's one of the magazines that I picked up on the plane, and I open it up, says C page 26 whatever, and there's a write-up review of my travel guides. I mean, how? what are the chances of that? Okay. Wow. Then I go upstairs to my office, and I look to see if, have I gotten any orders for these travel guides from around the world somewhere? And I usually, you know, I might get an order from Europe, and I once got one from Egypt and Mexico and different parts of the U.S. But here's an order sitting there from Ashland, Oregon right where I live. I never got an order on the internet from Ashland, Oregon, where I live. So I'm following up with this order and I call the people up or I email them and I say, I live right around the corner from you. Would you like me to deliver these or would you like to pick them up? It was so out of the ordinary. 
And they said, oh, we'll come and pick it up because I had a little interesting llama ranch and it was fun. And then uh, furthermore, I'm looking at the name of these people. My God, it was the same name as the person I knew 42 years earlier at Carnegie Tech where I went for a year. And that was his name. So I said, oh, come on. You can't possibly be this Jan Chaikin from Carnegie Mellon, can you, from 42 years ago? I just thought of you when I passed the sign going from Philadelphia to New York. And he says, I would be that Jan Chaikin. And so it was the same person whose name I thought of when I saw the sign going to New York. And they found about my travel guides by looking at the Hemisphere magazine. So it was like a quintuple synchronicity all wrapped up, wrapped up in one. We had a reunion, and that was an interesting experience. Yeah, Carl Jung would have really liked that one. <laughs> that is just fascinating. And when I get to one other thing, because we have another segment left, and we can start with this one. Deja vu, which sometimes related to synchronicity, as you might have noticed, and past lives. Who has a good story to tell? Well, we have... Um some different perspectives in the book, different um, kinds of stories. My favorite um, is titled Deja Vu in Samoa. And uh, I think this is how a lot of times people experience past life connections. It concerns uh, a fellow who was um, in the military. He was on a ship and they were passing American uh, uh, Samoa at night. And he had um, a strange feeling Uh, This was during World War II. He had a strange feeling of familiarity with it. Let's do the break here and then we'll pick up on that because that definitely is a good way to have a cliffhanger, a good setup for that. Rosemary Ellen Guiley, Michael Bryan. Chris O'Brien finally made it after the weather conspired to keep him away from us. The Road to Strange with Gene and Chris. You're in. Very (laughs) guest. for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Anytime, any place, anywhere, radio remains the most intimate of all forms of media. At home, at work, in the car, on smartphones. Over 90% of consumers still listen to radio every week. That makes choosing radio as a place to advertise your business one of the best decisions you can make. Email advertise at GCNlive.com and partner up with an experienced GCN representative. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. Fully cooked, ready-to-eat bacon. I'm talking thick, meaty, center-cut, presidential bacon. Savory and delicious. I buy some, I use some, I store some. Awesome. No refrigeration needed with a 10-year shelf life. NASA pack technology. Bacon. Fully cooked, fully hydrated, ready-to-eat right from the pack bacon. Or warm and served. Life-saving, ready-to-eat bacon. 10-year shelf life bacon. Ships free at FullyCookedBacon.com. FullyCookedBacon.com. You haven't experienced yogurt until you've tried a Mossy, embodying health and flavor in a true whole milk, green-fed dairy beverage. Every sip pays homage to our old world cows and the ancient culturing methods their milk benefits from. With over 30 probiotics, a Mossy's undeniably nutritious, refined, cultured sensation bolsters your health and awakens your passion for dairy. A Mossy's so good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. People search the internet for everything, including you. 
With a few clicks, information from your past can be quickly discovered, from business deals gone wrong to misleading reviews, negative articles, and unflattering images. Studies show 78% of people search for someone online before doing business with them. Will they find the real you? With ReputationDefender.com, you can establish a positive internet presence. ReputationDefender.com pioneered the field with over a decade of experience, serving thousands of successful individuals and businesses. We use patented, award-winning systems to boost positive content and suppress negative material. Don't let the internet define you. Take control of your reputation today with ReputationDefender.com. For your quick, free reputation analysis, call 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771, 800-831-0771, or visit reputationdefender.com. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. This is Micah Hanks of the Gray Alien Report, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Okay, Rosemary Ellen Guiley is going to tell us a story about deja vu. Please. Uh, yes, a man in the Marines in World War II, who's never been in the South Pacific, approaches on his ship the islands in Samoa and has the strange feeling that he knows them well, that he's been there before, like um, maybe this was an ancestral place of his. Now, most of his ancestors came from Ireland, so he's kind of confused by that, didn't have any Polynesian blood in him. But you don't have to have any racial blood in you in the present to have had a past life at some point in the past. So he has this feeling of intense familiarity. And then a few weeks later, they're actually uh, in Western Samoa, the ship lands, and they're doing various activities on on uh, the island. And he's out on a military exercise. He's with another guy, and they're pulling a mortar court uh, down a road that he's never been on. But he starts to feel that it's familiar again. And he tells the guy he's with, I know just what's around the corner. He describes uh, a house uh, in quite detail. And lo and behold, there it is. They round the corner, and there it is, exactly as he described. So it was kind of spooky to both of them. You know, they just sort of let it go at that. He wonders for a long time why he had this knowledge of a place that he'd never been. Now, his explanation of this was something that is a natural explanation and that certainly skeptical people would go to. And he said, well, you know, when he was a kid, he was fascinated by the South Seas and he read a lot of books about them and he would hang out at a library. I mean, he looked at a lot of photographs. Everything about the South Seas just fascinated him. And so he felt that those early childhood memories had been triggered up from some deep, dark vault by his actually being there. And even though it didn't quite explain why he would know that road and that, that exact house on the road, he thought, well, a lot of these old shacks look similar and maybe I just described what I remembered from one of my photographs. So that's how he passed it off. My feeling was that there was another explanation for this and it probably was past life. First of all, he had the sudden familiarity with an unknown place. The intense interest in the South Seas in childhood is often related to past life recall. So maybe he had the interest because of past life memories that he uh, was exploring as a kid without really realizing what he was doing. I think that's a much more logical explanation than uh, just a set of weird circumstances that came together. Before we wrap up our segment, if you had one story to tell that we haven't told already, Rosemary or Michael, which one would you tell? It's a story that's leading in right to the book, too. Uh, of course, our series is a series of books on the uh, about experiences on the road to strange, and this this one's forthcoming but not unrelated 
to uh, other stories uh, told in this volume. And that is that we have a story of someone studying a crop circle uh, in England and uh, having a time slip, an interesting time slip experience where he appears to have stumbled into uh, at the edge of, of a community uh, hundreds of years earlier in Britain. And uh, he's all excited about this. Uh, a little bit cautious, of course, as anyone would, not wanting to venture too far into it. Uh, but he uh, returns to get his friend who was meditating uh, in, in the crop circle and says, I'm so sorry I've been away for so long, like an hour. He says, no, no, you've only been gone 10 minutes. So this experience took place for uh, Ron, in this case, for uh, apparently a long period of time, and for John for a short period of time. And Ron wants to get John, take him back, uh, and they head back in to where this was, and suddenly uh, he had originally been on his way back to his car to get film and didn't find the car and just stumbled into this the edge of this community. Now he's taking John with him, and they go back, and voila, they're at their car, and he wasn't able to go back there and to share that experience. So that's just another example. And the next book, of course, has things that, that mimic the paranormal experiences in book one with uh, other experiences of uh, uh, strangeness that involve misplacement of space and time. So I'd say we have a dose of that one in our book, Tell, Travel Tales of the Paranormal. It seems to be part and parcel of the world of the strange, in my opinion. Rosemary, what would you add? Well, certainly what the books demonstrate is that we encounter the unseen and unexplained all the time, um, usually without warning and unexpectedly, and it does have an impact on our lives. And uh, as you pointed out, Michael, travel really does open you up. It opens you to the new and exciting and so when we are traveling, uh, whether it's just uh, about our daily affairs or taking an exciting trip, it's wise to have some extra sensitivity to what these other realms may hold for us as well as the natural world. Is this something that is forever consigned to anecdotal stories or is this something that maybe eventually Eventually, science will look into and maybe have a better understanding of what's going on in our world. Uh, shall I uh, tackle that first? Uh, I would say science comes around to the notion that consciousness is involved to a much greater extent than we have heretofore realized or accepted. Uh, then there goes a whole new realm that opens up and uh, we can ask good questions in science, and maybe we'll have the methodology to get better answers. But if nothing else, this path that we are on, the road to strange, I like to say, is that we are all headed into this new future with the hopes of having better means uh, to understanding the huge aspect of experience that we know so little about and can only pick up at this point in, in anecdotal ways, so to speak. Well, even evaluating the evidence is problematic because the evidence is not uniform. In order for science to even approach these topics, uh, a whole new set of ground rules has to be developed, and we don't have those. We've got a long way to go in that regard. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I think it's important to look at stories like this. We've heard from readers who have really resonated with stories in the book because similar things have happened to them. Uh, it provides validation. A lot of times people feel isolated in their unusual experiences. They might not want to talk about it because of the fear of ridicule, unfortunately, still prevalent today. And when they uh, learn of experiences similar to theirs, it's very validating. And I think that may be the biggest gift and truth there is at the present time. Rosemary Ellen Guiley, for those who are very, very curious about what you do, where should they check you out? My main website is visionaryliving.com. And in January, I have a new website coming out, Visionary Living Publishing. I publish books on uh, the paranormal and related topics. So that's a whole new venture. Congratulations on it. Michael, you have a website? Yeah, it's www.michaelbryan.com. And my last name is spelled B-R-E-I-N. And there I talk mainly about travel psychology, 
uh, and the sorts of involvement I've had in, in this whole field, in case anyone's interested. So you can find us on Twitter if you look for the PowerCast on Twitter. And now you have 288 characters instead of 144. So you can annoy us twice as much or make us happy twice as quickly or twice as often or something like that. Double the fun. How's that? Also, we're on Facebook, two official PowerCast fan clubs there. We also have Chris's site, OurStrangePlanet.com. And it's on a server that is not impacted by the wind. So no matter what happens at his home, that server doesn't go offline. I hope. Maybe I'm challenging the powers that be there. Yeah, don't go there. I've had a parent all day already, so I don't need it. <laughs> you also check out After the Powercast, which is a special radio show available only to subscribers of the Powercast Plus. You go to plus.thepowercast.com. After the Powercast is the unexpected special guest like Greg Bishop. We had somebody who lived in Aztec, New Mexico in 1948 and can tell you nothing happened there, even though they claim the UFO crashed there. All that kind of stuff. Go to plus.thepowercast.com. We give you a version of the show free. The network adds to plus.thepowercast.com. Michael Bryan, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, thank you both for joining us on the Powercast. Nice to be there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gene and Chris. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.